Hello there. <laughs> a wise man told me one time, he said, don't beat everybody in the head telling them that you're right. Time will tell everything. And I got time on my side. <laughs> oh, do I have time on my side? Yes, I do. Yep, I do. Yep, I do. Oh, man. The Cleveland Cavaliers, man, just got beat down into the ground to a pulp. Woof. That was brutal. From the jump ball, it was brutal. Now, this is what happens when they play a good team. The refs tried to cheat and put James Harden in all kind of garbage foul trouble, and it's not going to matter because when when Cleveland has to play a team that has more than one player on the team that can score, they're in trouble. They don't play defense. It's the same broken record that I've been telling you over and over again. And now everybody knows. Everybody knows. <laughs> then I read a report. Cleveland trying to move J.R. Spliff. For what? <laughs> One player is not going to help you. He's always, he's been the worst, the absolute worst two guard in the NBA I told you last year told you this year there's no reason why J.R. Spliff should be in the NBA period defensively he's a liability he makes mental mistakes on the court and you start him who does this I say you better off starting Wade than putting him to the bench and let somebody else come in. But if Wade ain't going to perform or do what he's supposed to do, then at this point in his career, okay, put in Jeff Green. Anybody but him. I would let Kyle Corver start before I let J.R. Spliff. He don't guard no damn body. And he's giving you like seven points. It's to the point where nobody's even worried about him shooting. This game is what they need. See, they're not like losing by 15. They're losing by like 30, 40 to the good team. And that's with the refs doing what they doing. So it is what it is. Uh, what happened to King James? I thought he was the, the greatest player on the planet. I think ESPN got to stop using that slogan. They got to stop using that slogan. This never happened to Jordan. Never. Kobe's been on bad teams. He had no help. And this was after he won championships. Kobe was still playing. He was competing. He wasn't crying about, I need this play, I need that play. Kobe played. So, at the end of the day, y'all got a decision to make. Because y'all like riding this dude's coattail so much. Like, he's the greatest thing since sliced bread. And he can't play defense. He's a defensive liability. The whole de team is defensive liabilities. But yet, y'all kiss they butt 24-7. And I want to know why. I really, somebody's got to explain to me something. Because it ain't making any sense to me whatsoever.
why y'all keep holding on to the dream. And I said the dream that this guy is worth the paper he's printed on. Because he's not. He's overrated and he cannot wield his team. And then Cleveland fans booing the entire team. It was wonderful. It was music to my ears. And then y'all want to blame Isaiah Thomas. Y'all sucked before Isaiah Thomas got there. Y'all had lost four of the last five games before Isaiah got on the court. So what happened before Isaiah Thomas came back? He was supposed to be y'all savior. Wouldn't you expect him to be in, in game shape when y'all don't even practice? Everything I told you has come to it's come true. I told you the Cavs don't practice. Why? Because that guy don't want to practice. Now they've been practicing for two weeks. The NBA just, they, they couldn't even beat the Miami Heat who just lost again tonight to the Pistons. They couldn't even beat the Heat. The Heat has no, no consistent scoring whatsoever. White side is sick or whatever, they, he might be out of there. The refs had to cheat to give the victory to the Cleveland Cavaliers over the Heat. They, they need help just to beat the teams that they supposed to be blowing out. They're escaping with victories. Out of all the teams that are like in the playoffs or they are not a third and fourth seed team. That team is basically an eighth seed. For real. If Miami wasn't falling and they're falling, the way they're falling, there's no way. They can't even compete. Who you they can't beat Toronto. They can't beat Boston. Hell, I don't know who they can be. And when you're losing against the teams, all the good teams, what's that mean? Does that mean that you're even one of them? I doubt it. Because the refs can only do so much. And especially by this being a prime time game. What do you think? They can't foul James Harden completely out of the game. They gave you every foul in the book. It didn't even matter. You guys were just terrible. I, I loved every minute of it. I loved every minute of it. And while we were getting in Super Bowl mode, and it's snowing out here right now, coming down pretty heavy. It's okay, though. We ready for it. I'm going to the crib. Everybody want to go kick it tonight and all that stuff. I ain't got time to kick it. Tomorrow's the game. Tomorrow's the show. So we'll do. We'll tackle it that way. Tomorrow the show. We'll get. We we'll get it. We'll get it in the way we need to. Get ready for the Super Bowl. So that's all we were doing today. Getting ready for that bowl. Today was strictly business. Getting our mind right. Getting our head together for that Super Bowl. Now, anything else is uncivilized. So you tell me what's what. That game was over by the, by the first quarter. You, you knew Cleveland was done. You guys have... They had, what, 39 at the half? Now, something's wrong. Now, would that bum go up there and accept responsibility and say, yeah, this is my fault just as much as anybody else? Or would he go up there and say something stupid again like, well, yeah, I had a bad two weeks, but uh, my numbers is, you know, it's some all-stars ain't got the numbers I got, you know. The numbers I got is still, you know, all-star material. Again, talking about stats. I'd be like, well, your wins and losses ain't all-star material.
As now they're 30 and 21. I'm waiting for them to draw. They nine games over 500. I'm waiting for them to drop. I want them to become 500. I'm, boy, I'm waiting for that. The refs say, you know, the NBA ain't going to let that happen before they do make a move. But the team, everybody's shut down. They just don't care about this season. They really don't. A lot of players has got contract years and saying, look, man, my contract is up this year. I don't have no time for this. And, you know, like, I'm trying to play and get my stats so I can get out of here. Uh, hopefully somebody give me a contract next year. Derrick Rose is playing for a max contract. Isaiah Thomas is playing for a max contract. And unfortunately for him, he wants a hundred some million dollars. Now, you want a hundred some million dollars, and it's like, okay, you want a hundred and some million. Is what you're asking for. Cool. Hundred some million. What are we gonna get for that? Is he gonna we gonna see any flashes of Isaiah Thomas, the player that used to be? Will his legs get back? Will he still be 100%? We don't know. But he needs to get his shots off. And so now he's not shooting as much because the people are like, hey, man, you shooting too much. Like he said, why Why did you get me there? Why did you bring me here? You don't want me to shoot the ball. He's not a, he's a ball-dominant point guard. Same thing I told you when he came. Kyrie altered his game to fit LeBron's game. He knew how LeBron had to play, and it took some time, but he was able, he's able to play off the ball. Isaiah Thomas is another smaller version of LeBron James. He lives splitting the defense. I told you, that's why he gets hurt so much. Splitting the defense and splitting the defenders is a dangerous way to live. You have to trust your teammates enough by distributing the ball. He's a scorer more than he is a team facilitator. This is going to be a problem for somebody like LeBron James. Because he needs somebody to bail him out. He can no longer play four quarters. And he's playing for stats. And when you're playing for stats and you're out here trying to catch Kareem and all this, and get triple doubles, these are the type of things that happen. You start looking ridiculous out there. And he looks utterly ridiculous out there trying to get stats. He back in the game. He should be on the bench. They lose about 40. Ain't nothing you can do. He got 11 points. He want to get back out there. So he can get some garbage points and some garbage rebounds. So he can try to say he got a triple-double. That Russell Westbrook mentality. LeBron James has the same mentality. And it's coming back to bite him right in the butt. And I'm loving every minute of it. <laughs> now tell me, tell me, tell me how he's the king again. 